This is the Roller Coaster Podcast, and I'm your host, Lucy Q. Life is a wild ride. It has twists and turns. It's scary, exciting, and downright fun. So throw your head back, arms in the air, and come along with me for the ride. Life is like a roller coaster, baby, baby. I wanna ride, 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 ride. Do you hear that whisper? That little voice that tugs at your heart, telling you to start living your best life. If that sounds like you, then now is the time to join Nectar Growth. It's the only place online where you can connect with and learn from great coaches with different areas of expertise. Why live another day not believing that you're enough, not seeing all that is possible for you? Why live another day dimming your own light? Nectar is the perfect place for you to discover the real you and uncover who you're meant to be. Life is a journey that we are not meant to walk alone. Nectar gives you a nurturing and supportive community to walk with you on your journey. Start living your best life and see what is truly possible. Come join us at NectarGrowth.com. You know you're worth it. Is it possible to awaken your brain's ability to identify your limiting beliefs and reprogram your mind for you to become your true self, thrive in life, build better relationships and improve your self-esteem? Joining me today is Juan Carlos Guvea, rapid transformational therapist and clinical hypnotherapist to share how you can free yourself from your limitations. Welcome to the podcast, Juan Carlos. How are you today? Hello. Very well, thank you. And very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. So why is it that you, you got into RTT and hypnotherapy? Uh, I always had an interest in psychology because... Um, Psychology is what uh, drives our interactions and our connections as, as humans. And, um, and working in the scientific field, I always had a, bio, a biomedical science background about the body. And um, I wanted to explore the effects of the mind on the body. And that led me to pursue a career into hypnosis and uh, polyvagal theory. So the mind influences the body and the body reinforces the mind. So every thought creates a physiological response in the body. And the body responds by a specific behavior or action. I usually explain this in simple terms by telling my audience to imagine that they have a, a beautiful yellow lemon in front of them. And they squeeze that lemon and then inhaling the fragrance of the lemon and seeing the texture. And then I ask them to cut the lemon in slices and insert a slice in their mouth and bite into it <laughs> and chew into it. By this time, some people are salivating some people are experiencing sensations in the mouth. Where is the lemon? It's in your imagination. The lemon is in a thought, yes. And was able to create the salivary glands to produce more saliva. So that's an example that uh, people makes it more palpable and uh, experiential. And then, um, exploring the fact that uh, if we can change our thinking pattern, we can change our behaviors. 
And if we can change our behaviors, if they're negative, into positive ones, our life improves. And you train, you did your training as um, a rapid transformational therapist. You trained with Marissa Pierce. Yes, yes. Direct, mentored by her, yeah. And she's, I would say, Marissa's the leader in RTT. Correct. So can you walk me through what it actually is and how it's used to uh, help people get rid of their limiting beliefs? Yep. So uh, RTT uses hypnosis. Uh, to access the subconscious mind. But it's not like standard hypnosis that you have an induction and an end. It's a, it's a pioneering form of therapy comprising of psychotherapy, NLP, neuro-linguistic programming, CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, with hypnosis. And in the hypnotic stage, phase, we have interrupters. We have investigation. We have interrupters and we have adding the new positive beliefs. We go to the root cause of that belief and safely guided, we eliminate that thought that is detrimental to the client with transformational effects in their lives. And how do you actually get down to those root causes of a problem? Because on the surface, um, you know, somebody may be holding themselves back, but how do you actually dig down and get to those root causes as to what happened to cause that person to hold themselves back? I see, it, uh, it's all, um, we all find out in the process while in hypnosis. Okay, so it's, it's just part of the hypnosis process that it, yeah. it reveals itself. It's part of the, the guidance, the dialogue, the rapport that I establish with my client and their hypnosis that we remove it, we identify it, and we, we change it. And what is it that you found when it comes to our beliefs? How do they shape us? Because, you know, it's, it's easy to look around and see two people that came from the exact same circumstances, one person's excelling and one person's stuck. So how do our beliefs shape our behaviors? Absolutely. Within families, within families, within brothers and sisters, same, same parents, same household, and yet some are excelling and some are different uh, lifestyles. I, 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 I give always the example of two brothers and the same father. The father was alcoholic and one brother said, I'm an alcoholic because my father was an alcoholic. And the other says, I'm not an alcoholic because I saw the devastating effects of the alcoholism of my father. Same household, two people saw two things different. One assumed the position, okay, my father was like that, I'm like that. The other, no, I refuse to be like that and change. Why is it easier then for people to fall into that negativity trap as opposed to, you know, looking at that different side of, yeah, just because my parent was an alcoholic, I've seen how devastating that is. That's not going to be my legacy. So this is why an example that there are other examples of uh, that the 
some brothers see it as the the blueprint to follow and others to actually I'm not going to go there. So it is easy because the brain is negative by nature. The brain primary force is to keep us safe and alive. It's not to keep us happy. So it's negative by nature. And with that in mind, it always be scanning for danger. So it is easier for us to be in the comfort zone, even though that comfort zone is painful, but is something that we know. So is this, are these things that we can uncover for ourselves? Um, or, you know, is there some elements of it that we can do ourselves at home or do we always have to go to somebody else to help us uncover these? Ideally, we can work on ourselves. Even I couldn't do what I do if my client wasn't open for that. There is an element of the client wanting the changes. No one can force you to do anything. So primarily is the client, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm, I've been in this road for so long, I need help. Comes, comes to a point that the client, the person finds that I've read so many books, I've done something of my own, I tried this, I tried that, but I somehow I'm not able to shift it. It's better to have someone else's assistance. I always give the example of the, the best hairdresser able to do amazing hairstyles, but would prefer someone else's under maybe under their guidance, do the cut here, do the cut there, or the eminent heart surgeons know about how to conduct an operation of the heart, but they're not gonna do themselves an operation. Or a dentist is not gonna be pulling his own teeth. <laughs> So, no, I think if you're doing that, you're going to need a, a different kind of help. <laughs> exactly. So it's always better if we are guided and uh, brought to a space of safety and have it, um, it dealt. But we can, we can start to do the preparative works to ourselves, yes, by, by reading self-development books, by meditating, by uh, joining groups that are positive and um, uh, empowering groups. Yeah, I've certainly found for myself that while you may start off exploring these things on your own, um, and there's plenty of it, there's, you know, whether it's you're catching videos, you're taking part of, um, you know, master classes, you know, anything like that, you can do a certain amount yourself. And there's a lot that you can reveal and heal. But I think when you really start getting to the, the meat of your issues, that's when you really need to get somebody else in because Again, going back to our brains want to keep us safe. They want to protect us. Right. So when we start when we start poking that really sensitive area, that's when our mind is yeah. like, uh, no way, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, it's not. No, don't. It's go like, there. no, you don't want to go there. There's not a problem. Don't go there. It's good. Don't look. Yes. And, and that's, that's what we do. And that's what you really hmm. need to have somebody that will gently guide you where you need to go because 
you know, it can't all of a sudden out of nowhere, something, something can come up. Somebody can ask you a question and it just strikes that nerve. As you use the lemon example earlier, mm -hmm. sometimes that recall of a painful memory is enough just to snap you back into that time. And you're, you, you have the overwhelm of emotion as if it was just occurring. Yeah. 90% of the population are waking up every day in the past. What do you mean by that? By memories, by behaviors, by things that they've done the day before. Oh, that the constant running over of what happened yesterday. There's this argument, there's this stress, there's this, there's that. You're As opposed to, so what, how should we wake up then? <clears throat> if 90% if of people are waking up in the past, <clears throat> then how should we wake up? Every day we have a new day open to opportunities and possibilities every day is a new day we are the only species that can bring the past and the future into the present in nature present it's all it is a tree is developing into a fruit, into, into flowers and fruit at a specific rate. Nature is not in a hurry. We are. It takes a specific time from flower to a fruit. No matter how impatient you are, you're not going to turn that flower into an apple just by being exasperated. So we are the only ones that have this ability to wanting everything fast. And in the same way, we can bring past and future to the present. Every time we think a memory from the past, a painful memory of the past, we experience it in the present time. And likewise, if I start thinking what's going to happen in five years time, which will be all amazing, all positive, obviously, we all be traveling and we'll be in amazing times. Um, I'm happy. But I also have the ability to say, oh, my God, what's going to happen in five years' time? The collapse of the economy and this and that. And what is it preparing me? It's already building an image and feelings of anxiety and fear. And they, it's five years in time. Why do I need to experience what is going to happen five years' time now? Because present it's all it is so if we wake up in the morning and we say today is a beautiful day and everything is going to be amazing it's likely to be an amazing day because we don't know it's uncertain but if we say oh my god it's uh, this and that i have to go to work and i want to speak to that person it's already a different energy. Yeah, because you're, you're putting that energy out and it almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy if you think you're going to have a bad day. Absolutely. But if you have the ability to wake up and say, today is, no matter what, today is going to be a great day, you know, it's almost a way of tricking your brain into finding reasons for it to be a great day. And even if something comes up, you're able to release it much easier because you're choosing to see the good in the day rather than focusing on the bad. And then, you know, when you're focusing on the bad, that's when it draws you back into, you know, depression and anxiety and stress. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we have that ability in our minds to do it very quickly, very easily and naturally. So we can always be grateful. Gratitude is it's an amazing tool. 
Yes. Lot, lots of people don't use gratitude. Be grateful that you are inhaling without being aided by an oxygen supply. Be grateful of, for your eyesight. Doesn't matter, you're wearing glasses, you still be able to see. It's just improving your eyesight. You are able to move. You are able to communicate. There are so many things to be grateful. But in states of anxiety and depression, gratitude is not there. Everything is heavy, foggy, gray, no light. And then when we start introducing movement to the body, moving away from, from the situation gradually, move the body, look at the window, Start with small things and be grateful for the cup of coffee you were drinking. It's a learning, it's a learning process. We have to learn these tools to empower ourselves. And the more we surrounded with people who have those tools already implemented, I always give the tools I I, I practice to my clients. Uh, they say, Carlos, you always feel so positive and so happy and energetic. I, I've, I have my, my days, I have my moments. But for every negative thought, I have five or six that are positive. And I, I don't entertain the negatives for too long. I'm a human like everybody else. I'm subject to my nervous system. I'm alive. Stress will always be there. The only time that we don't affected by stress is when we're dead. There is no stress there. But when we are alive, there always be something happen, something triggering. It's just how we navigate the route. So gratitude is one of them. I tell my clients, find three things that you are grateful for. Oh, no, I don't have three things. Find one. There's always something. Exactly, and, yeah. and for me, mm -hmm. I found um, one of the keys is to slow down you know, for, and, you know, that's one of the positives I think that's come out of the last year and a half is that collectively we were forced to slow down. And, you know, for me, you, you mentioned, you know, be grateful for your cup of coffee, but it's, you know, instead of making a cup of coffee and going to your desk and working and then drinking a half cold cup of coffee, take 10 minutes and go sit outside and just look at the world around you something is something is always going to pop up i mean for me i live in a rural part of our country right by the ocean so i always have you know some sort of animal coming through my yard um beautiful it is so, so but just good. to just to be able to and i know it sounds odd and you know the me from five years ago would have been like you're you're doing what but just even just sitting and looking at the trees and just watching the birds come and go just for 10 minutes, 10 minutes. And it can completely change. One, the sunlight's going to do a hell of a lot of good. Amazing. Amazing. And, and just having that, that sort of connection with something bigger than yourself. I think Grounding. that's, yeah, it's, then you sort of blend in the grounding and, yeah. you know, when you put yourself in that environment, you can feel your heart chakra open up. You can feel, you know, your connectivity with something larger than self. And that's, you know, one way you can start to develop your gratitude muscle. I do three things daily that um, primes my day. 
I'll wake up, I'll drink a glass of warm water. Not cold from the refrigerator and not too hot from the, from the kettle, warm. And on that glass, I put all my intentions for the day. It's going to be an amazing day. I want energy for the clients that I'm going to see. All my interactions today are going to be positive. And it's going to be an amazing day. So my thoughts are in the water. And then I drink the water. So my intentions are within me. And then I do my stretches. Hydrate the body, movement to the body because I've been sleeping for eight hours. I do gentle stretches, 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. So the body is hydrated. The, more, the body had movement. Then I sit for my meditation, another 20 minutes. Those are some And then cool. I'll have breakfast, shower, get dressed, primed for my day. And yes, what, you know, whenever you start your day putting yourself first, and, and as I like to refer to, you fill your cup up before you get to anyone else then the day is, it is much better. But, you know, and I can remember a time when I used to wake up to an alarm and it was your feet hit the ground and you were, it was just a rush. You know, you were rushing. I mean, kids were little, you got to get kids going. You got to get showered. You got to get ready. And it's like, go, 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 go. So you've started your day just by emptying your cup. And even taking, you know, even if you don't have 30 minutes to dedicate to a morning routine, even as simple as taking, you know, maybe that's the 10 minutes that you go outside with your coffee, or you just take Absolutely. 10 Absolutely. minutes just to clear your head and, and give time to yourself. You know, that's when you can really set yourself up for a positive day. Now, as we wrap up here, uh, Juan Carlos, I'm just wondering if you have any final thoughts of words of wisdom that you'd like to share with our listeners. Yes, uh, I'd like to give the listeners uh, a rule of the mind. The mind responds to the pictures and words we install. Mm. Make those pictures amazing, wonderful, positive, powerful, and in the present time. Yeah, and Not we get tomorrow. to, and we Not get to tomorrow. choose. Yeah, we get Not to tomorrow. choose. Absolutely. Not and that, tomorrow, I, today. That's. I think P -P -P. that's what a lot of people miss. PPP. Not. Positive, powerful, present time. Remembering the mind responds to the pictures and words we install. So make them amazing, make them positive, powerful, present time. And if we do this, we're primed for the day. Beautiful, beautiful. And if somebody's looking to connect with you, Juan Carlos, where's the best place for them to do that? If they want to connect with me, they can connect via Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, or just go to my website, changeideserve.com. And I have uh, a, a videos there. I have a blog. And there is lots of uh, resources to uh, inspire and um, apply to, to our lives. And um, it all starts small steps. A long journey starts one step at a time. 
but it's just keep walking. It's the consistency in the walk, taking time to, to rest and then carry on walking. It's rem remembering to stay on the lane. It's okay to, to stop. It's okay to regain your energy, to carry on. If you're looking to connect with Juan Carlos, make sure you check out the show notes. I'm going to have all of the links in there. And Juan Carlos, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Lucy. It was a pleasure. Lovely to be here. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Roller Coaster Podcast. Want to chat or share your ideas about today's show? Pop me an email at hello at the rollercoasterpodcast.com. Don't forget to connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at the Roller Coaster Podcast. Our theme song, Roller Coaster, was performed by the Lucky Setback. Audio editing by the one and only Jeff Quigley of Quigley Creator. Love is like a roller coaster, baby.